and they're going into the teens they need to be not just given skills and education they need to be given soft skill training they need to be made confident they need to be made uh, they, they have to bring out all the uh, different kind of uh, soft skills like you know as i said public speaking confidence you know being able to really come out and show the best that they can and it just requires a little bit of spark it's not a small it's not a big thing you just need to push them at the right moment and of course when they reach the school time and the college time then you need to be able to provide the right education and it's not just about education from you know when you reach class 10 11 12 it starts with what happens in primary school now the reason i'm telling you all of this is not to give you a long boring story about uh, really what uh, we're thinking but to make you realize that what we're trying to do is not not a piecemeal kind of a step that we're taking it's a it's a huge plan and and we don't expect that we'll see results in the next 2 to 3 days 4 days or 5 days or even years but this is an investment we're making a system we're creating so that in the coming years in the next 50 years we will see that megalaya comes on the right track sometimes we start complaining when it's too late for example we always complain and we say well how come there's so many mothers who are losing their lives while giving birth why is the maternal mortality rate so high in the state and then we say oh well the doctors are not doing their job the nurses are not doing their job you know the institution delivery is late uh, is is not high well that's the last part of the entire problem it starts off by as i said it starts off way before that when you to ensure that there's enough spacing between two children being born or conceived we have to ensure that mothers who are anemic who are high risk mothers need to be identified you can't blame the system when the things go wrong and that's one mistake that government and people in society make we look at the result and what happens at the end and we blame that as a problem whereas that is the result of the problem that is there it's not the problem in itself maternal mortality maternal mortality rate is not the problem it's a result of not being able to contain a lot of issues which leads to that problem similarly when we look at unemployment we look at other problems of the youth substance abuse that is not the problem it's a result of the problem that we have not been able to address issues when it should have been at the right time at the right phase and hence the reason i'm telling you all of this is because that is exactly how we need to plan and when we move forward it's not just the the government that has to do it we all have to do it together it's our responsibility it's our society it's our community these are our children this is our future and we all have a role to play yes government may have a bigger role to play because we have to create the institutions we have to create the policies we have to create the infrastructure and we will do it but again we can't do it in one go it takes time and that has been the story of how we have been driving every decision that we make why we focusing so much on education because education is a critical part to ensure that the right kind of training and right kind of academic uh, uh, you know training is given to the children at the right time the opportunities that they want to pursue but they don't have the accessibility to it so therefore these colleges are important and that's why you're seeing that we are going and so many of them have come up a lot of people have questioned what about the financial impact i said yes it will be there but we can't look at it as expenditure we have to look at it as investment we are investing in our youth so that they will become the drivers of the growth of engine for our state and that's why many such colleges universities we're trying to come up with courses we're trying to come up with we just recently started and uh, inaugurated the 
Captain Williamson Sangma State University building. And we have already passed the ordinance to make the technical university into a full-fledged university. In fact, after 50 years, finally we have a university in our state. And was due, overdue in fact. And I hope that this institution of having a state university will actually lay the foundation for creating a much, much stronger, much more vibrant, much more flexible education system for high and technical education system in our state. And hence a lot of things are happening. And as I said, the reason I'm telling you all of this is they're not happening in silos. We have a plan for everything and we're connecting the dots in such a manner so that the picture of the youth comes out in those dots and in those drawings when we connect those different dots that are there. We've realized that uh, when it comes to the youth, we did a youth survey and you'll be surprised to know that when asked what is it that they want to follow in the future, what is their, the, you know, what line would they want to move forward in? You will not believe 30% of the youth said sports, that they want to follow sports. We surveyed 90,000 children, almost 90,000 from different rural paths, urban paths. And suddenly it made us realize that our children are really interested in sports. And hence we said that we're going to have Meghalaya games every year and we had it twice in the last five years because of COVID we couldn't have it every year. But that too after 16 years of not having it in Meghalaya. So imagine what the youth want. If as a government we're not able to provide what the youth want, then obviously they're going to go in the wrong direction. You can't blame them. They're like a ball of energy. You put them in the right channel, they will be constructive. You let them go wherever they want, they will be destructive. And hence, it is our responsibility to ensure that we do put them and mold them and put them in the constructive channels. And that's why sports is important. The number two area which the youth said they want to be in is music. Engineering and doctor and all came at 10%, 15%. Politician came almost last, I should say. Yeah. But that's how it is. And we don't realize that the youth want so many things in life. And based on this survey that we did, we were able to then have uh, uh, this grassroots music program. It's a really wonderful program where we are supporting almost 500 artists who are today uh, performing in different uh, parts, showcasing their talent and government is paying them. And it's really creating a revolution. And now we're slowly working towards ensuring that we'll start funding them to start creating studios, to buy equipments, to be able to then really connect with each other. We're working towards ensuring that uh, now the students who are doing well in sports, we also have a scholarship for sports. So anybody who, is, who got a gold medal in the last Northeast Olympics, the government has decided and we are giving them 7,000 rupees as scholarship every month so that they can follow their, you know, their passion of sports. We are allowing this money also to give it to them because we realize some of them are from economically weak background. And hence, they may want to use this money to support their families. So almost 200, 300 youths that time got medals. So if you got gold medal, 7,000 rupees per month, civil medal, 6,000 rupees per month and a bronze medal, 5,000 rupees per month. It's not a big amount of money, but it's a message to show them that we are supporting them, that we are with them. And this small amount of money will help them buy the equipments that they want. So hence, a lot of things like these are happening. There's another great program we have got, which is called Star Program. This program is a program where we actually scientifically assess a youth's uh, physical capacity and uh, the capacity to do, be in sports. And we tied up with uh, one company called Edge 10. They are uh, headed uh, by one, uh, in fact, uh, one Olympian uh, from Australia. And they have this equipment where they look at, uh, they test them, their speed, their high jump, all these aspects. 
And uh, Mr. Yan was telling me the other day that he had gone, he has done almost screening of about 6,000 youths all over the state. All over the state. And he has done this for many, many states in the country. And uh, he has done it for many countries in different parts of the world. And uh, he told me that he had gone to Nongstoin. And there was a boy, he's just a, you know, from the village and uh, uh, not uh, very fluent in English. And uh, about six foot one inch. And he said that when this guy was tested, the entire team was shocked. Because his results are one of the highest results he has ever seen in the entire world not just in Meghalaya or in, in India. And he said, this guy is a born star. He, if we train him well, this guy can not just compete in the, in the national games, maybe one day this boy can compete in the Olympics. And this kind of talent would have never come out. I think his name was Wan Lam. So this boy would never be able to know and we would have never got his talent out if he had not gone for this talent hunt. And now, out of these 6,000 children who are there, these super talented athletes, so we took, all of them have scored the highest level of scoring that they can get at US and, and Australian level. So I'm not talking of national numbers, I'm talking about international numbers. These 200 of our athletes who we have selected as superstars, they are super athletes, I'm sorry. Uh, elite athletes. So the elite athletes, these are 200 boys and girls who have scored higher than the international average. And we have decided that these 200 children will now be sent to different centers of excellence throughout the country and throughout the world so that we are able to ensure that, if not now, in 2032 in the Brisbane Olympics, that Meghalaya should get a medal. And if we don't invest on it now and don't move on it in a scientific manner, we won't achieve it. So, friends, uh, I have a lot to say and um, I could keep going on and on and on. But I'm telling you all these stories because so many things are happening. And coming back to my opening remarks, the youth is at the center of all of this. And the reason we're doing this is because we realize that if we want our state to move forward, it is the human capital which we need to really, really work on. No matter how many good roads we have, no matter how many institutions we have, no matter what development we bring in, until unless our human capital is not able to take advantage of those infrastructures, then the, the meaning will not be there in it. And hence, while we do increase infrastructures, while we do invest on other infrastructures and other things all over the state, which is very important, we cannot leave out the human capital aspect. And hence this entire planning, as I said, from the point of the time when the child is conceived in the mother's womb, the story starts. And the government needs to ensure that interventions are there at every level. And what we are doing here today is just a part of it. It's just one part of the entire plan. This is just one dot in this entire picture of the youth of Meghalaya. And that's the kind of vision and thought process that this government is working with. And that's why it's easy for us to take decisions sometimes. A lot of people think that, how come this decision was taken? I say, when you're clear in your mind what you want to do, half your decisions are made. You know what you want, then you know what you have to do. I'm very clear about that. And we as a government are very clear on what we want to do. And that's why tough decisions also sometimes we are ready to take because we realize that we need to reach that goal. And in order to reach that goal, these are the steps and these decisions we have to take. And hence, friends, uh, I once again thank you all for taking your time out, for uh, coming here to this program. I know that uh, it's uh, very early, but uh, we have many programs uh, today. Uh, so we are uh, quite a bit in a hurry. But uh, once again, I thank all of you this uh, Shillong Engineering College and the uh, College of Architecture and Urban Planning uh, in uh, Balalgri in uh, West Garo Hills, I'm sure is just the beginning of many, many more such technical colleges and universities and colleges that will come up. 
We have also decided to come up with a fisheries college, with a college for veterinary, with a college for dairy. All these will now follow, uh, you know, in the future. And uh, like that, we'll ensure that these colleges also are also in different uh, parts of the state so that different uh, youths in different areas can also get advantage of this entire uh, plan of this government to make education, especially higher education and higher technical education available to different uh, youths of our state. So I congratulate the education department. I congratulate our, uh, our education minister. I congratulate our uh, chief secretary. In fact, uh, a lot of people know or they may not know, but uh, it was under his leadership as the additional chief secretary of education that all these programs and plans and policies have moved forward. So he had a very, very important role to play in uh, really making this happen. So I do take this uh, opportunity to thank him. Now, of course, as chief secretary, he doesn't specifically look into it, but uh, one must appreciate the work that has been put in by him in the last many, many years to bring education to the level that it is. And the entire team of the education department, I can tell you, and I think all of you know it, I don't even have to tell you, the education department is one of the biggest and the most challenging departments that we have. It's not easy. There's so many problems. There is so much of uh, issues that are there in it. And uh, it's not sometimes easy to take decisions, not sometimes easy to move forward in it, not easy to resolve the problems because they're very, very complicated. And the scale at which education department is, the number of schools we have, the number of institutions, the number of teachers, it's much, much higher than uh, maybe all the small states of the rest of Northeast put together. That's how big the education department of Meghalaya is. More than 50,000 teachers, more than 14,000 plus schools and institutions. It's not small. Just to give an idea, Manipur has got only 4,000 institutions, schools and colleges put together. We are at 14,000. That's like three times more. And as I said, if you put all the other small states of the Northeast together, I think still Meghalaya will be more. That's how complicated the education system in Meghalaya is. So it's not easy. And yet, in spite of all the challenges, I'm uh, really grateful to our Honorable Minister for handling it uh, in a very, very great manner. Tough decisions, not easy, but uh, we're slowly and steadily moving in the right direction. A very good decision of putting up uh, the Education Commission has been done, and I'm sure that the Education Commission will be a, a very important commission in the days to come, as it will be able to bring in experts from all angles, look at the entire planning, plan for the next 20 years, 25 years, 50 years. As I keep telling people that, you know, 2072, the foundations are being laid for that today, in this next 50 years where the state will go. And hence, what is it that we want to achieve in the next 50 years? Decisions have to be made now. Foundations have to be laid today. And therefore, I would want that in education, we take the right decisions. And hence, the Education Commission is in place. And I'm sure that it will take the decisions and plant the seeds, lay the foundations so that the education sector can be a really a dynamic sector and uh, not just providing education, but these institutions will become research centers for us because that's ultimately what we should be. Innovations to, to, to take place here. Tomorrow we would want somebody to say that the Shirong Engineering College is where the next big in innovation took place, the big invention took place. That's the kind of work which should move towards. Today, for any small thing, we have to go to IIT, this and that. I would want tomorrow that others would say, well, let's send it, send it to Shillong Engineering College. You know, it may be a big goal, but we have to have big goals. We have to big, think big. If we start thinking small and always thinking that we can't do it, then we'll never be able to do it. And so therefore, uh, you know, I hope and I pray and I'm very confident that that is the direction that we will move towards. I once again congratulate all of you. Uh, especially the education department and once again thank all the uh, guests who have come here today to be part of this program. I wish the Shillong Government uh, College of Engineering the very best uh, and I wish the education department the very best in all the endeavors. May God bless each and every one of you and may God bless our beautiful state of Meghalaya. Kublai Shibun, Mutela and Jaihan.